Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jimmy is Pomo, and today we will be talking about the first 22 things to do the moment you get yourself the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, if you own the Galaxy S22 or the S22 Plus, the majority of all of these also corresponds with your device as well, but there are a few settings we'll talk about today that is including the S Pen. Now, the other title I could have gone with is how I customize my Samsung, just because I get those questions all the time. So this is the video for you. So the first settings that will change today is dealing with the display. Now, inside of display settings, there are quite a few of these different settings you can change, and I did clump a few of these together. Now, the first one we'll talk about is dark mode. I think it's just easier on the eyes itself, and it also saves you a little bit of battery life. And the reason why I state battery life is because this one is the AMOLED screen. It uses AMOLED technology. Each of all these different LEDs that's inside this phone, they're all individualized. So basically, that means any areas that are just black, it's because the LED is literally not on. There is no battery consumption going to all of this black space on the phone. Now, when you compare that over into light, it's illuminating the entire thing. Every LED is now in use except for this little spot up or over here. So this is where I go inside of dark mode so it can save battery life and it's also easier on the eyes. Now, you just wanna make sure that your motion smoothness is on adaptive. This should be on adaptive out of the box, but just make sure it's still sitting there so this way you can have a very smooth you know, animation and scrolling experience. And the nice thing about it is that it does fluctuate and it's adapting to what it needs to do. So if at, you know, many times when you're scrolling, it'll be at 100 20 hertz but if you're just looking at the screen no scrolling no movement then it'll move down to a lower you know uh, a refresh rate so then this way it's not using more than what it needs to then as you scroll on down you can see your screen resolution so this is one that you can change if you want to you know a lot of devices they look really good at full hd plus but if you want to you can head over into wqhd plus and you can apply it it will take a little bit more battery life so you're kind of uh just going the opposite of what we just did here for dark mode. So maybe they kind of cancel each other out just a little bit. But the nice thing about it this time is when you use the WQHD plus, you still have the adaptive smoothness. So it used to be back in the day, if you went to WQHD plus, it would move the, the screen uh, refresh rate down to 60 hertz. So here we go, we have adaptive and we also have WQHD plus. Now this is the one that I wanted to change right away because I've always had to tap the screen because 30 second timeout is too, you know, uh, too quick of a time for me. I usually move it right over into two minutes. That's pretty much for me personally, uh, the best time frame for it to time out. So if I set the phone down, walk away, come back, it's still there and I can still use it. Now the next one that we're gonna talk about because we're still inside display is gonna be the navigation bar. So you know what, if you haven't moved away from the buttons already, I suggest you should just because it's such a better experience. It's so much nicer. You don't have those little ugly icons on the very bottom taking up your screen. And the nice thing about it is that if you want to go back, you can swipe from the, you know, the right side. You can also swipe from the left side. And then if you want to go home, you just swipe up. Now, the next setting that I want to show you is one that you're able to just swipe down anywhere on the screen to pull down the notifications panel. Now, I do believe out of the box it is turned off. I went through and I turned it off really quick just for this demonstration because I want to show you where it's at because the past devices of Samsung, if you swipe down, it just went into the application tray. You had to go all the way to the very top and these phones are getting bigger and longer. So your thumb, you know, it's just easier to really swipe anywhere on the screen. So how you're able to turn it on if it was turned off is you go anywhere on your home screen, just press and hold that's empty and you go inside of settings. Now this is where you scroll all the way down you can see swipe down for notification panel. So now basically anywhere that I'm on the screen, I can swipe down, notification panel is there, all of my quick settings is there, pull it down twice and then this is where you have everything pull up and so it just makes it super simple and easy if you don't have this uh, little feature turned on. Now the next setting to change will be dealing with your side key. So right now, most people are used to having the side key be the power button or the power menu. So out of the box, when you press and hold, it takes you inside of Bixby. Now, if you don't wanna have that, all you have to do again is swipe down. You're gonna hit on this little power button and this is where you go into side key settings. Now inside of here, this is where you can either have it where that press and hold is to wake up Bixby, but here is that power off menu that most of us are used to. The other one is dealing with the side key. So if you're somebody who always presses the side key or you have a little kid or a toddler that presses the side key a bunch of times, it might be launching the camera. If you want, you can actually turn that off. Now, if that is not an issue or problem for you, you can keep it turned on and you can either have it open the camera, which is the quick launch camera, or you can really open 
open up any other application that's downloaded on your phone. So if there's an application you use all the time and you want to open it by double pressing, that is what you're able to do. So that is all the settings you need to talk about with the side key. So now this time when you press and hold, it's going to take you into the power menu. Now the next thing you would want to do with your Samsung phone, if you haven't done it through the setup process, is add in your fingerprint and face recognition. Now I'll also show you a trick that you're able to use with fingerprints to make it go much, much quicker while still staying very secure. So what you want to do is go inside of biometrics and security, go to fingerprints. Now this is where you do want to add in a lock screen. So you have pattern, pin, and password. I'm surprised pattern is actually still here. I'm a pin user. Now password is the most secure, but you can make your pin, you know, a minimum of four digits. So you can go quite a bit more than four if you want to. You can make it six or eight digits, uh, but I'm going to keep it with what I usually like to use. Now that you have your pin all set up, what you want to do now is place your thumbs or even your fingers, whichever you would like to use on the ultrasonic fingerprint reader right here. And now here is the trick that I'm going to show you that most people don't know. Uh, you can actually just use for one profile when you're setting up one fingerprint, you can actually set up for both hands. So this way there is less scans for your phone to go through in order for it to unlock. Now it's also nice, you know, to go through and you know rotate your phone uh, it's good to hold it and it's good to set it down because there's a couple different ways you unlock your phone you're either holding it or it could be sitting on the table so those are my tips that i would use for adding in a fingerprint is put in for one profile both of your thumbs so both you know, hands can unlock it to where there's less scans to go through for it to unlock so it goes quicker, but also make sure you're holding the phone and you also have it sitting, you know, on a table. So I'm going to just keep it as fingerprint one because it's both hands. Now, if you go through and you set it up where you want to have a full set for right thumb and then a full set for left thumb, all you would have to do is you can actually just tap that and then you can change the title of that one to either right thumb or left thumb. And then if you want to make the fingerprint go even faster, what you're able to do is you can go right over here and you can have show animation when unlocking. If you don't need the animation, you just want it to unlock. You basically told it, hey, unlock my phone and it goes straight to it. Then you don't need to have that little animation to go along with it. The other thing you can also do that can save just a little bit of battery life is you can actually turn off the fingerprint always on. Basically, all that means is you would have to turn on the screen first in order for it to actually able you know, to read your fingerprint. But if you leave it the way that it is right now, which is the way that most people would probably want it, is even when the screen is off, you're able to unlock your phone just by placing your thumb exactly where it needs to be. So now that you got your fingerprint put in there, let's go over inside of face recognition. So this is where we want to put in your pin again. So this is just a convenient way of unlocking your phone, and I think it's actually super, super quick. So all I'm going to do now is just point it at my face. And then now that we are registered, it gives you an option if you want to keep it on the lock screen until you swipe it. So this is one of those things that's annoying. You might as well just turn this thing off right away. So it's very similar to the animation from before. I don't really care about an animation. I hit my thumb. I want it to unlock. Same thing here. If it's reading your face for the face recognition, why keep it on the lock screen? Uh, and then swipe it to get into the phone. So for me here, if you turn this off, the moment that the phone reads your face, it's going to unlock and go into your phone. And then inside of the face recognition, the screen pops up right after that. And so you have a few more settings that you can play with. Again, there was that one that we just got done talking about. You also have, you know, if you want your face unlocked to be turned on or off, you have faster recognition, require open eyes, and then you can also brighten the screen. So if you're in a dark location, uh, then you can actually have it brighten to read your face a little bit better. Now, if I'm in a dark location maybe I don't want it to brighten the screen to read so I'm going to turn that off so the next setting that I usually always like to change is right now there's really not that many icons on the front screen and and so you're basically kind of locked into like a four by five so all you'd have to do is again press and hold anywhere on the home screen that's empty go inside of settings and this is where you can change your grid for not only the home screen but also your app screen so this is just a way that you're able to hold more data on one screen and it makes it so much easier. So I'm one of those people here that goes to the very end. So this is a five by six. All you'd have to do is just move these wherever you want them to go. Uh, so then this way you can actually hold a little bit more. And so for me, I do like to create folders. And so I'll be creating folders a little bit later on. Uh, and then what you're able to do here now too, is that you can go back inside settings. You can change it for your apps. And right here, you can see that 
we will be able to move all of these and condense them into one. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second on how you're able to do that. But beforehand, you can see this. The first one is fully filled. This one's almost like halfway filled. When you do this and you do one more setting, which I'll show you, all of it goes on to one page. Uh, so there we go. Now you can see that your little apps pages are looking a little bit better. Uh, again, when you go back inside of these settings, uh, you have your, your home screen grid, your apps. And then for the folder grid, you can change this for a three by three or four by four however you want your folders to look. So when you look at your folders here, uh, it will change when you add more in. So right now this is like a three by three. And if I add more applications inside of there, it's just gonna make it look like uh, the setting that we just got done doing. Now beforehand, when we talked about this area here, dealing with the application tray. When you look at it, it's actually not even in alphabetical order uh, for some of these areas here. And then also too, it's not condensed. It's not looking good and clean. So right here, you can sort it. So now you can go to alphabetical order. So this way you can find everything much, much quicker. And then on the very top again, you can go inside of clean up, which the clean up option, it actually did it along with the ABC with the whole alphabetical. So you can see it's actually not two pages anymore. All we have is just one page sitting right here. Everything is now in line and looking clean. So you don't have two pages of just random, you know, unalphabetized applications. And then now it's just all clean and set up. Now the next setting that you're able to change or add in will be dealing with Find My Phone. So yes, you can use Google's version of Find My Device, but the Find My Phone from Samsung does a little bit more. You're able to find your phone, you can tra track it in you know 15 minute increments, you can make it ring if you need to find it, uh, you can also remotely wipe it, you can also remotely unlock it. So if it's at a location with friends or family and they need it to be unlocked, you can do it from wherever you are in the world. And all you wanna do is go inside your settings, go to biometrics and security and just make sure that you do have a Samsung account and you're logged in. If you don't have one with this portion right here where it's called Find My Mobile, it allows you to log in and you can create one. So here's Find My Mobile. It talks a little bit about exactly what all it does. And it also shows you the website you head to, which is findmymobile.samsung.com. So if you lose your phone, even if it's in your house, you can make it ring if you need to unlock it. There's so many things you can do, but right away, it just says right here, offline finding. So it allows you to locate your phone even if it's offline. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure it sends its last location. So when the battery goes down to a particular level, it's going to send wherever its last location is. You know, if, um, you know, like it, it's not gonna notify you at that moment, it's just gonna send it through a server. So this way, if you do lose it, then at least you knew where it was, where it was about to die. And you also have remote unlock. Now it's just going to back up your pin. So this way, when you give it the ability to remotely unlock, it is going to use the pin that you put in right here. And then now you have all three things turned on. Again, I would highly suggest if you've never gone to findmymobile.samsung.com, I highly suggest taking a look at that website, logging in with your Samsung account. And then this way you'd be able to take a look at all the features that it has to offer. Now the next setting that I would like to change will be inside of the camera. So dealing with the camera, there's a couple things that I like to change. It may not be exactly what you would do, uh, but up here for the three by four for the ratio, this is where you can switch it to that three by four for 108 megapixel. But for me, I'm the old school type of person. I like to have nine by 16. If I want to upload to somewhere like Instagram where I need to crop it down, I can do it at that moment. And actually the application does it for me as well. But I'm, I'm a big fan of the nine by 16 when it comes down to photo. You know, it's the same thing with the video as well. So when you're holding your phone, you know, horizontally, you're gonna have that full frame. That's the nine by 16. The other thing that I also like to change will be dealing with the, the selfies. So when it comes down to save selfies as previewed, what's going to happen is if this is turned off, if you're wearing any type of, uh, you know, a branded shirt or hat, or if you're somewhere where it says where you are, if you have this one turned off, it's all going to be reversed. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. And if you keep it like this, it's the way that you are viewing it through the camera. You can read if you're wearing Adidas or Nike, it's not backwards. If you're at a location that it has the name on a big billboard, um, everything is going to be able to be read the normal way and it's not going to be backwards. So again, I always like to turn this on here, which is save selfies as previewed. Now the next setting that I'm gonna change is dealing with this little tab on the bottom and this is Samsung Pay. So if you turn on Samsung Pay, uh, you're gonna see a little tab on the bottom. It could be on your lock screen. It can even be when your phone is off. Uh, other than that, you're just gonna have a little baby tab right over here. Uh, but basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna show you how you're able to get that thing turned off. So you just wanna go inside of Samsung Pay. 
you go to those three little dashes on the top left, you go inside of settings, and then inside of settings, this is where you go to quick access. So this is just a quick access to open it up. If you don't want it to be on your home screen and you don't want it to be on the, uh, the screen off or lock screen, you can actually have all of them turned off. And so that big tab that was showing up from before uh, is actually not going to be there. And if you just swipe up, it's just gonna be the regular you know, swipe to go home. Now, if you do want to open up and use Samsung Pay, what I usually do is I take the application of Samsung Pay, uh, and then what I do is I take it onto my home screen, and then I usually actually move it over to my second screen and place it right there. So this way, anytime I wanna to go to the gym or any place that I have all of my cards set up, uh, I'd be able to open up Samsung Pay right there without having to be intruded with their tab on pretty much every single screen. So now let's go inside of some of the S Pen settings that you would maybe probably want to change. And one of them is dealing with what happens when you press and hold on the S Pen button. So that is right there called Air Action. So what you wanna do is you can click on this little S Pen icon right there, or what you can do is you can go inside of your settings, you can scroll down, you're gonna head over into your advanced features, and then this is where you can go inside of S Pen. So whichever one you would like to use, uh, this is where you can go inside of, uh, for example, Air Actions, and this is what's gonna happen when you hold down the S Pen button. So if you want to, you can have it do some navigations. It can go back, you can go home, you can open up your recents. Maybe there's an application you like to use all of the time, um, but you know, for some people it might be easy to open up the camera. But again, you have many ways of opening up the camera. You have double press of the side key button, and if your phone is locked, you can actually swipe up with the camera icon. So if there's a different application that you use all the time, maybe you're a huge Facebooker, maybe a big Instagrammer, you can press and hold and you can open up that application. I can even use it to open up YouTube. So if again, if I press and hold on the S Pen button, it'll just open up the YouTube for me. Now, still going along with the S Pen settings, you can play around and take a look at some of these. And another one that you can take a look at is the menu style. So when you take out your S Pen or when you hit on this little button to open everything up, uh, then what you're able to do is you can either view it as standard or compact. So right now, when the uh, air command opens up, you're gonna see that it's taking up the majority of the screen and it's also very big. You can do the option for compact. And so if you wanna have it just a little bit smaller, you know exactly what these icons mean then you can use this one. Now, if you're still not familiar with all of the icons, you can keep it as standard, so this way you can read and view exactly what they are. And then piggybacking off of the air command menu, you can see all these different applications. What you can do is you can press and hold and you can change the order of where, where they are sitting. Or what you can do is you can change around, you know, the order through this menu right here. So here's all of the shortcuts that you can change and take away. Now there are a few of these that I don't use. So live messages is one that I don't really use. So you can actually take that one off. AR Doodle uh, is another one I don't really use. Translate, I really don't take a look at many other websites in different languages. You can take that one off. Um, but you know, one that is actually pretty fun is coloring. So, you know, I have a toddler, he loves playing with this thing. Uh, I also have a 12 year old, he loves playing with it as well. So if you wanted to, you can actually press and hold even on this menu and you can bring it up. So I'm gonna put it right underneath the smart select cause smart select is a pretty big one. I'm gonna keep the notes on the very top. And so this is the perfect, you know, order for me. And you just basically hit on the back button. And then scrolling to the bottom over here, you're gonna be able to see what happens when you remove the S Pen. So sometimes you don't want to have the air command pop up. Uh, maybe you wanted to create a note. So that means every time that you ever take out the S Pen, you're only using it to create a note. This might be something for you. Now I use my S Pen quite often and probably more than the average user. So I like to actually put mine at nothing. The reason why is because I take out my S Pen all the time just to use things. I don't need a screen to pop up for me to, you know, the moment I pull it out, I don't need to go through and take it away. Uh, now, if I do want to use anything in this little menu, I can just basically open it up. But now let's say that I do have the S Pen, it's already out, I've been using it for a while, I do need to use it and create a note. All I have to do is press and hold on the S Pen button, double tap the screen, and then here we go, and I can create my note, and that's basically about it. So it, you know, there's a, there's a lot of little tricks you're able to do when it comes down to the S Pen. Now the next setting that I usually like to change will be dealing with the edge panels. I am a big user of the edge panels. This is where you can open up applications really quickly, You know, if they're not on the home screen or if you don't wanna go inside of a folder. But I do a lot of it when it comes down into Smart Select. I always like to screen capture a small area of my phone. I send it off without having it saved to my phone. So how you're able to get that done is if you open this one up, 
you can see this little settings button. Now this is where you can add in more tabs. So this is where you have your people, so you can call someone really quick. But here's Smart Select. This is what I like to use all the time. You can also add in some tasks, weather, some tools, reminder, clipboard. So if you clipboard a lot of things, you copy and paste a lot of things, clipboard might be one of those that you can also use. So I think I'm gonna turn on the, the tasks as well. And you can also edit some of those if you would like to. I'm not gonna go too in depth on that one. The most main thing I wanted to talk about was pulling in a few different tabs over here. And so this is again, the, the major biggie that I always like to use uh, with the edge panel. And then now this is the point where you're able to go to the very top and you can customize all of your quick settings. So again, these are just quick settings. These are things you can get to right away. You also have your expanded view right here. Now, if there's any of these you would like to add in, you can actually hit on this plus button or you go to the very top, you can hit those three buttons uh, on the very top. And this is where you can go into edit. So there is more things up here that you may not know was sitting there. And if there's a few of them over here that you don't wanna use, you can actually bring them on up. So let's say like link to windows is something that you don't really use. You can actually bring it right on up if you want to. Um, but I believe the majority of these, I'm probably gonna keep it the way they are. Um, I'll probably bring up my scan QR code. I don't really scan too much, but I will bring down my Dolby Atmos. And I'm also gonna bring down secure folder. Uh, and then you can take a look at a few other things up here. You can play around with some of the settings of the S Pen Air actions. You also have your the processing speed if you want to change how your phone is running, wireless power share, and uh, also this extra dim is pretty nice. So I'm going to bring that down as well. And then once you have them down in this area, then you can move them around and you can bring in the most used ones towards the very front, again, just by pressing and holding and moving. And then now when you take a look at your, you know, your, your quick settings right up over here, this is where you can swipe through and then use anything that you just got done moving. The next setting, if you want, you can change. This is one that I like to do, and that's changing the look of my Google search bar widget. So it's something that's sitting on the home screen all the time. Everybody sees it. Sometimes I would like to change it. Click on that G for Google. Go to the very top right hand side inside of that little icon and you just want to go inside of settings now inside of settings this is where you go for that search widget because we're talking about the google search bar widget and this is where you go to customize widget now through here this is where you can change what your your you know either the letter or the word of google looks like so you can have you know the g sitting there right there this is where you can change the way that it looks if you want it to kind of be like a rounded corners if you want it to be fully rectangular here is the whole oval you can go inside of done. This is where you can go through and you can change the, the looks of the bar. So you can make it go black. Uh, you can also change the color of what you want it to look like. So if you want, you can have it go kind of like this reddish color uh, and then you can make it uh, changing the shade a little bit. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker to that reddish. And then once you have it sitting where you want it to be, hit on the close down over here. And then this button over here, you can make it you know be more see-through or not. So if you want it to be a solid search bar or a little bit of a see-through, you can put it right there, hit on, uh, hit on that little close button and this is where you hit on done and that is basically it now you have a completely different looking you know google search bar widget than some of the people sitting next to you and then what you can do is you can even bring this down if you want it to be just a little bit smaller now the next thing i usually like to change will be dealing with my lock screen wallpapers so go anywhere on the screen press and hold you can go to wallpaper and style this is where you go to lock screen wallpaper services and I always turn on the dynamic lock screen. Now we're not fully technically done yet here. You can see this little settings button and inside of the settings button, you can choose a couple different categories. You can actually choose up to five different categories and then there's new images coming in every two weeks. So special is usually one uh, that is pretty cool. You can either do uh, use Wi-Fi only or not. So if you want it to download with your mobile data, this is where you can tick it off. So there you go, you hit on download. Uh, another one I like to use is also art. Uh, and then you can also use life. Now you have a bunch of these other categories you can use as well, but these are usually the three that I like to use. And also when I share all of my, my wallpapers with you guys, this is where I get them. And then down over here, you have a couple options for auto update and then download using mobile data. So now we're also going to talk about something that you can add to the very top and it's it's with the one pull down that you can add it it's always going to sit there when you pull it down twice and that is changing the the brightness of your phone uh, but i like to have it you know right away so what you can do is you can pull it down twice click those three dots you can go to quick panel layout and with the quick panel layout you can add in brightness control so i like to have it always show just because it's just right there. If I need to change the brightness really quick, pull it down once, change it, and then we're done and, and we're able to go on. Other than that, you would have to pull it down twice. 
The next thing that we can also talk about is dealing with what happens when you move over to the very last screen over here. So if you do a print pinch to zoom, you can see that there is two different options. You can either use Samsung free or you can use Google Discover. Now, if neither of those is something that you want to use and you just want to turn it off, now you don't have that screen, you know, on the left hand side of your phone anymore. Now, your Google Discover is technically just hitting on the little G. It takes you inside of Google Discover. Everything that you see here is what would have been on this left hand side of the screen. And then now we're going to do something that I do with every Samsung phone, and that is changing my animation scale. Because when you're going through application to application, menu to menu, screen to screen, there's always an animation. I'm not a big fan of it. You just go inside of the settings. You're going to scroll all the way down, and this is where you want to unlock developer options. So to do that, you want to go inside of about phone. And then inside of about phone, you want to go to software information. And then here you just want to tap on the build number and you want to tap it about, you know, seven times or whatever the case may be. So build number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven taps. You type in your pin. And then once you've done that, the developer mode has been turned on. So you just want to go back to screens. And then now that you're there, you can scroll down, you can see developer options. And then this is where you want to scroll down and just find all of these scales. So you have animation scales and then a few others. So as you scroll down, this is where I go to window animation scale. I put it to 0.5. You can turn it off all the way, um, but really just by moving it to 0.5, it pretty much does everything that you need it to do. And you can even see here going from screen to screen, it goes a little bit quicker. Example, window animation. If it was five times, you get to see how long that comes up. And that was what it was doing at 1x. But here we are doing it at you know 0.5x and just making the phone a little bit quicker. And then the very last thing you want to do, you know, this is where you don't want people to disturb you. You just went through your phone. Maybe it's nighttime. And so what I like to do is when it comes down to do not disturb, I don't want to have all of these notifications coming through and dinging and, and vibrating my phone, things like that. So all you'd want to do is go inside of do not disturb. And instead of turning it on just right away, you can actually have it go with a, with a schedule. So with a schedule, what you can do is if you tap here, you know, you can make it go every single day just by tapping all of these. If they have the blue ring around it, they are selected. Uh, the set time, you know, you can do 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. So once it gets to 10 o'clock at night uh, and then at uh, probably 6.50 in the morning, at least for my schedule, that means that during this time frame, every single day, I will not be getting notified from anything. You will see something pop up in the notifications panel, but you won't get those, you know, vibrations and dings and rings and things like that. Um, now you can have exceptions with the exception. You can do calls, messages, and conversations. So if you tap here, uh, what you can do is you can have it for repeat callers. So it can allow calls when they're being received from the same phone number more than once within 15 minutes. So maybe somebody's trying to get a hold of you. It's super important. You can do the repeat callers. So this way, if they're calling you, you know, more than once within a 15 minute time frame, their call can actually come through. Um, so you can either have that turned on or off. Then when it comes down into calls and messages, this is where you'd probably want to do the option for favorite contacts only. So when you go through and you have some of your contacts that you've selected as favorites, then this way theirs can actually come through and then you can get notified during those do not disturb times. So everybody else will not be coming through. So that is it for the video. We went over about 22 different things you're able to do on your Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. I can make a separate video in the future going over everything for the S Pen, but this is really just showing off everything that I do with all of my phones the moment they come out of the box. So hopefully you guys appreciated it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe, subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.